The Morden was started by Scottish farmers. They had a problem with their sheep dying and they didn't know the cause of the problem. So the farmers were pretty innovative back in those days and they decided to employ their own veterinary scientists to work out why the sheep were dying. And they found out very quickly after that that it was due to clostridial disease. Clostridial diseases are bacterial diseases and they cause all sorts of nasty diseases causing death and, and illness in sheep. And from those early days, the Institute went on to develop the first clostridial vaccines, in other words, methods of preventing the disease. What's unusual about this is that the farmers actually took action themselves. Rather than waiting for other people to come up with solutions, they actually became the start of the institute and established the institute that we still have today. Were these big landowning farmers, you know, is it gentlemen farmers, or were they just rank and filers? I think it was a mixture, to tell you the truth. Um, they were certainly the movers and shakers in, in their day, and they actually signed the first constitution of the Institute, which in those days was called ADRA, the Animal Disease Research Association, and it was signed in Edinburgh on the 17th of March 1920. They would be a mixture of farmers, some of them quite wealthy landowners, but there would also be a lot of more moderate farmers and tenant farmers as well coming together, I think, to really try and find solutions to their own business and professional problems. How did it become known as the Morden then? Who, who or what was Morden? Well, Morden actually is a part of Edinburgh. It's on the outskirts on the south side and the institute was based there for many years. Eventually, the city moved further out and our predecessors decided to move from Morden out to Pentland Science Park, which is at the Bush Estate. So it was really to try and get a more rural setting for the institute. But everybody knew the institute as Morden because it was based in Morden and we took the name with us forming the Morden Foundation, which is one of Scotland's biggest charities. And what do you do nowadays? We still work on infectious disease of livestock, so we have kept the same vision and mission as our predecessors back in 1920. And what we're really into is trying to prevent infectious diseases. Rather than waiting for them to happen, we want to diagnose them quickly and then apply either the correct treatment or to prevent the diseases. So we work on all of the major, what are called production or endemic diseases, mainly of sheep and cattle, but increasingly also pigs, poultry and aquaculture species. You do horses at all? We do a little bit of work on horses. We are holders of the Equine Grass Sickness Fund, which as the name suggests, provides research funding to explore that really important disease of horses. So some of the work is done by Morden and some by our external collaborators. The only reason I know anything about that is because we've got horses at home and grass sickness is terrible. It's, it's potentially fatal. You can have three horses in a field, one of them gets it and the other two don't and yeah. it's, you know, they're really struggling to figure out why. Yeah, no, it, it remains a, a, a massive problem and of course goes back hundreds and hundreds of years and in fact that's why Morden holds the equine grass sickness because in the past, in the 1920s, the, the Clydesdale horse was a key element of the farm equipment. So that's really why we've continued to work on it, but really difficult in terms of actually what causes the disease and how to prevent it. How global is your reach? We have a very strong international reputation, and I think that's built up over the years because we have been really productive in developing new vaccines and then either taking them forward ourselves or passing on the technology to commercial companies. So if you are in any continent of the world, there will be vaccines that Morden has produced, either against things like abortion, pneumonia. More recently, we've, we've developed vaccines against a nematode worm of sheep called Haemonchus contortus, and that's selling in Australia and in South Africa at the moment. So we have been really innovative in providing practical solutions that farmers are using. And we're very proud of that because we're a small Scottish institute but with a, a massive reach in terms of our technology. It's interesting. It started off essentially looking at animal welfare, but fundamentally what we're looking at here, with the exception of horses possibly, is food. It's human food. We need to protect our food supply. Yes, absolutely. And we are very strong believers that food security is a local, regional, national and international issue. From a Scottish perspective, we're really proud 
of the livestock that we rear and the quality and safety of the food that we produce. And we believe that more done really significantly contributes to that success story in the red meat sector, but also in our, our new work in the aquaculture area. So I, I strongly believe that we should be able to produce our animals sustainably. We should be able to maintain the health and welfare of those animals and that people should understand the provenance of producing animals here in Scotland or, or wider in the UK because we're really proud of what we do. Given the fact that we're talking predominantly here about disease, this is maybe an odd question, but how are you going to celebrate 100 years of the modern? <laughs> yes, it's, 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 a, it's a good point. I mean, we do focus on disease, but of course, it's really the health and welfare aspects because we see disease as one of the major negative impacts on both welfare and obviously on health. So how we're really going to celebrate is that we have a parliamentary reception which we're holding on the 17th of March 2020 exactly to the exactly <laughs> and to the day of the signing of the original constitution back in 1920 so that's going to be really good. Uh, we have a big conference which we're going to hold in November which is going to celebrate sort of past, present and most importantly future, what all these new technologies are really going to bring. We've got great opportunities to produce better diagnostics, better vaccines, better disease control along with our collaborators. And then another aspect that we really like is back in 1920 we had a more done mobile laboratory. It was a great big long wheel-based vehicle and it travelled all around the highlands and islands of Scotland diagnosing disease and helping farmers. So as we speak, we have just bought a second-hand vehicle <laughs> and we're doing it up to have a modern equivalent of the Moorden bus. I think that's a great idea. Well, okay, if, the, if the mountain cannot come to Mohammed, then Mohammed must go to the mountain. Yeah. Well, exactly. And we've had great reception um, about this idea and people are already booking us in to call in on our visits around not just Scotland. We're going to go to England, Wales and Northern Ireland uh, because we have members of our foundation are based all around the UK. And um, we intend to take our bus around to show what modern diagnostics can do. But it's the same idea. Diagnostics are, are increasingly used pen side on farm. And so we want to show people what is really possible. And our bus is also going to be an education and knowledge transfer, knowledge exchange bus. Uh, so we'll be able to open up the sides and uh, present to schools, to school teachers, to all of our different public audiences that we feel really need to know a little bit more about livestock farming and how we maintain the health and welfare of those animals.